Hi guys, Amory here, coming at you with some really fun behind the scenes for All Pitzer Week. But today we got to meet with a special lady and I'm going to let you hear about all the behind the Pitzer stuff from Kendra. I just want to remind you that if you enjoy this channel and you like the content we put out, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. Enjoy! windy this morning. Little windy. <laughs> but yeah. How has your summer been? It's been great. Super busy, um, but you know, you're gonna have to really slam it. Sorry. My kids. We got the there we go. crew in here. Yes. Kendra's taking us out for some cold preview. Yes, we're gonna do a little tour and uh, see what we can find. And then for the people that want to get to know Kendra, what is your role here at Pizza Ranch? Um, I guess if you want to give me a title, I guess you could call me the breeding manager. Okay. But um, I kind of help in the office a little bit during sale, you know, the catalog prep, and uh, just keeping track of the brood mares mostly, and uh, all things, nice. wherever I'm needed. So yes. how did you get involved in breeding? Uh, actually, when I was a senior in college, um, I got hooked up with a job down in Texas, North Texas, in an embryo transfer facility. I learned a lot there, was able to do some hands-on stuff there, um, kind of got the bug, really enjoyed it. Um, I've always liked horses, but you know, the repro part was really interesting to me. And uh, So what do you mean by repo? Repro, the reproduction. Okay. The reproduction okay. part. Yep. And so when I was a kid, I always wanted my dad to... Uh, breed our mare that we had because I just really wanted a baby colt. That was my that was my uh, thing when I was little. But anyways, uh, my husband Sam and I got together and uh, I started coming out here and it kind of all just worked out kind of funny and awesome. here we are. Yeah, so. and now it's kind of a family thing. Yeah, huh? they're my kids. Yeah. yeah. So what's the grandma. best part about having your kids on the ranch? Oh, it's a great place to raise kids. I just, it's, you know, we've got the river to play in and the animals and the, just the country life. It's just hard to be. Yeah. You know? I, so it's, it, we're very blessed. We live on a, a great place um, and it's, it's fun. It's just great, great fun. So. So what does a typical day in Kendra's life look like? Um, well, we uh, get up, get the kids taken care of. Uh, during breeding season, which is my main busy season, starts uh, about around our spring sale time. We have a lot of customers bring our mares then uh, to drop off and stay for the summer and uh, get bred to whichever stallion they've chose. And so get up in the morning, uh, get up there to the breeding facility and we start gathering stock up. We work everything horseback, um, kind of like cattle. We get them in um, every other day. We'll do the dry mares first. We run them by studs. We call it teasing to see if they express any signs of heat. Okay. If they do, we uh, catch them and then we'll take them in for palpation. And then uh, we'll get the wet mares in, which have babies on them. We call them wet mares that have the babies. Okay. And with them, we don't have to do quite as much teasing by the stallions because we can go by their days, by their full heats, which is about eight to 10 days after they full, or they'll have another heat at about 28 to 31 days. Okay. So, so how long are mares in heat? It just depends. Um, some of them can show signs for like up to a week. Some of them are really quick about it. Um, and only for about three days, they're receptive. It just, it depends on the individual. Uh, our stud manager, Ben Hepker, does our palpating and he's done it for 40 some years. And so he's, he's pretty good at getting it nailed down to, you know, the moment we need to do it. We use all uh, fresh, we 
call it fresh hot semen. We don't cool it. We'll just collect the stud and then we bring in his set of mares and we breed them right away. Okay. With that fresh semen. So, um, and we usually, this year we turned out seven pasture studs and they have about 20 to 30 head apiece and they're all in their own pastures. They don't order each other. So there's no, you know, fighting or anything like that. They're all uh, separated by a group of cattle or another pasture. And uh, so I would say we had about 140, 160 head of mares turned out with studs this year. And then we uh, had an artificial insemination string up here of probably, I would say around 250, 80, 80 of those would be customer outside horses probably okay. and then the rest would be ranch mares so, so i know a lot of people are learning about what ai means yes. and not the ai that's right. on our phones <laughs> yeah so yeah what exactly is ai or how does it work okay so it stands for artificial insemination and that is the process of us uh, we collect that semen from the stallions and then we will extend it with a uh, a certain type of extender we use. We like Inra 96 is the brand that we use. And uh, a lot of our studs, the, the semen performs well with that extender. Sometimes you need to find the proper extender to go with a certain horse. Okay. Um, his semen might live longer with a certain extender. So you kind of got to play around with it, but we've found that that works really well for okay. ours. Um, so are the extenders made out of different materials? Yeah, okay. so uh, there's proteins in there, um, other things that, that, just so that it's basically food and extra volume to get the, the oh, semen where it needs to okay. be. Okay. Yes. Um, it's kind of funny, we had a, way back in the day when they first started doing it here with some of the old horses like Two-Eyed Jack and Watch Joe Jack, our vet, Dr. George Baker, um, he passed away a few years ago, but he had his own recipe that he made homemade because wow. they weren't making, you know, mass producing it back then. And I think it was probably the 70s, 80s, somewhere in there. Um, that was before my time. That's but, awesome. Um, anyhow, I we redid our breeding barn. And so I actually, I found that recipe on one of the inside cabinets. And so I kept it. It's all on typewriter. Oh it's kind of cool. Yeah. So he would make his own every day. Oh my and, gosh. And, you know, have it ready. Wow. So that was really neat to find. But um, so anyways, we take that extended semen and then say we have 10 mares to me a browbeater that day. Then we divide it up between those 10. Of course, we count it first to see how many million sperm cells there are per milliliter. Okay. And then that way you can figure out your math to um, divide it up you know, correctly to make sure that you have enough cells to inseminate the mare with. Okay. Yeah. So you have a good chance of settling her. So that way. fertility wise, is that how you're kind of testing a stud's fertility? Yeah. Or just um, sperm count? The or is that the same? Sperm count and motility are the are the two main important things. Um, we, we need to make sure that they are going in a straight line. We look at it under the microscope to see where it's going. You don't want it circling. You don't want, uh, you know, slow moving sperm. You, you want it to be straight and fast. Okay. And then that way you have your best shot at getting the mare settled. Okay. Yeah. So these mares out here now, we're gonna go see, were most of these AI? Yes, these were all the mares that we had in the AI string this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And th so they would have been bred to Mia Browbeater, Dukes and Divas, Favorable Intentions, and, um, oh, POD2 show, the new bay stud that, um, he's our junior stallion where we bred quite a few more mares to him this year. Uh, he got his AQHA championship. So those will be kind of fun to see. There's two on the sale this year. We just kind of bred him in between a couple shows last year, just kind of off the cuff. So, um, but it'll be neat to see next year how those babies look. We gave yeah. him a lot more mares. So. Okay. Yeah. That's Bam Bam, right? Right. Bam, okay. Bam. Yep. And who was the most popular stud to breed to this year at uh, I, would, I would say Mia Browbeater had the most. Uh, and of course his... Is that all together for your guys' and outside breeding? Uh, yes, okay. I would say so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're really excited about him. His colts uh, show a lot of promise. There's a lot of guys riding them. Mm -hmm. uh, they have really nice shape to them. Uh, Good-minded and yeah, so it'll be, it'll be fun to watch them 
in the HPI coming mm -hmm. up. I think there might be a couple that are old enough. Okay, now. so yeah. their oldest crop, is it four or five year olds? I think it's four. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. I have to look it up. So a few are eligible, or yes. four year olds are eligible yes. for the HPI. Yeah. And then, in your opinion, for these mare mamas at Pitzers, what's been your favorite line? Oh gosh, it's hard to beat the two eyed red bug mares. Mm -hmm. um, they're just really maternal, they carry a lot of capacity to them. They're good ranch mares. The thing about them surviving here is we have tough winters. The summers yeah. can be kind of brutal. Um, you just have to have a mare that can take care of herself, take care of her baby, and yet milk enough to raise that a healthy foal. So they've got to be able to survive the elements because we do all of our foaling out in pasture. We don't put anything in the barn unless it's, you know, an emergency or, or something crazy is going on. But they kind of have to to work it out and, and tough it out and be, be survivors. And and it's kind of cool because those colts learn that. They're out moving around. They see the, the trees and the holes and the, the all the stuff like that, which they don't always, you know, get to see that stuff when yeah. they stall. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of neat to watch them grow and, and, you know, figure out life that way. Yeah. yeah. I would say a lot of these colts, they're very tough. Yeah. You guys raise tough horses Yes, that are user-friendly. And, you know, with the way survival of the fittest kind of happens, is it's it's kind of come up that way, just mm -hmm. through the generations, you know. Mm -hmm. The families that are, that are tough and stay sound and can survive any sort of sickness or inclement weather, they're the ones that come through. And, and then we end up keeping those fillies out of those really good producing mares, so that genetic is, is there. As sickness wise, what kind of sickness do you guys face with young colts? Mostly, I would say with young colts, it would be we have a little bit of um, oh the scours or the coccidiosis type stuff in the beginning, um, but we really try to not. We don't have too much of that if we keep them out on fresh ground. Okay. We get that when they're falling in a you know falling in a stall or falling mm -hmm. in a pen or something like that because then they pick up species of other horses, things like that. So if we can keep them on fresh dirt, fresh grass, it really helps cut down on that. Okay. Yeah. In the summertime, we do um, come up we, uh, with a little bit of a respiratory issue. We call it rhodococcus. Um, I know a lot of places down south give the serum as babies, okay. um, the plasma, which it's hard for us to do that with you know, falling out 250 head of mares to yes. try and do that every single day. It's just not feasible for us. Mm -hmm. um, but keeping the mares in good shape, keeping them on clean uh, ground, keeping them fed up well, those are the things that really help us to keep them healthy. Okay. Yeah. And fresh water is important. Um, just, you know, if you were being a, a crunchy, you know, trying to stay healthy yourself, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we also deal good. with the, the strangles a little bit. Um, we've had it for years, but. And I know strangles is something a lot of people worry about, right. they, but it's, it's kind of scary. What I've learned from you guys is it's better to let it pass at a young age. Yes. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. Uh, most of these colts get it and they go through it and it's over with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can look a little scary, mm -hmm. like I said, um, it's a lot, but usually you can't really do much about it. You just kind of let them go through it. If you start trying to give them antibiotics or, any, or anything like that, you can kind of drive those abscesses, ooh, I better roll that back up, drive those abscesses inside internally. So we just try, um, we've actually had our own vaccine made, uh, formulated through culturing some of some sampling off of some of the colds that have the strangles virus and we've sent it into labs and they've made us our own personal mix with however many different strains that we've okay. um, collected over the years. Um, this year it's worked, I would say pretty well. We've had a handful get it. Um, nothing crazy. We just worry about when they do get it in their guttural pouches that can be tough on them because then they can't breathe really well okay. and we have to open them up and drain that mm -hmm. out. But this year, so far, we haven't had any of that. It's That's just awesome. been little little lumps and bumps and uh, like I said, it can look kind of scary, but once they get over it, they've had it, it's over with. Yeah. They're done. So. 
I know last year the two colts we brought home were much healthier than a couple other colts mm -hmm. we got in that maybe didn't have right. some vaccines. Yeah. Done. Yep. And the, just the exposure, it's kind of like when you send your kids back to school for the year, it's like they all <laughs> are exposed to all these things and they got to yeah. kind of get through it. And then once they get through it, you should be good. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the approach we take. Yeah. Would yeah. you care if we get out and walk yeah, around no, through some great. of the babies? Great. Perfect. They're up so here trying to be out of the wind. Full crop this year. Is yeah. there anything different or special? I would say that this year we have a really big variety of bloodlines, different types of colts. Um, we've, you know, we've got your standard line bred pits and ranch stuff, you know, and then we've got a few out of like cut and bred mares. We've got some hashtags mares, a couple hottish mares, um, some really southern bred sort of things uh, crossed into our line bred jack studs, but we also have some of them bred to Boone Sand. He's an own son of highbrow cat, so they're like straight cut and bread. Okay. So if you're looking for something like that or want to try it, we have those. We've got the straight bread line jack or line, straight line bread jack stuff and ranch stuff. Of course, we've got the riatas, everything mm -hmm. that's, you know, there's three or four of those. Um, and then we entered a lot of studs into the Top Gun Stallion incentive too. Okay, what's this to Top Gun So it's in, uh, in conjunction with the American Rope Horse Faturity Association. Okay. Um, they've been going a while with that faturity and it's just kind of a side pot where they're gonna take that money and those horses that are eligible for that have a chance at that, so. Okay. Yeah. So what would you guys say has been some changes made to pitzers that keep you guys competitive in the breeding industry? I would say um, definitely just keeping our stallion battery up um, with, you know, shown studs, big name studs. You know, we've got the metallic Casanova stud coming up this next year. Everybody's really excited about him. He's done really great with Clay Bomer down in uh, Texas. They've won, I want to say they've won close to 100,000 this year. And uh, we have, I would, a handful of mares bred to him for next year. We kind of snuck in some frozen semen up here. And uh, so that'll be kind of fun to see those. Um, get that working cow cross in, mm -hmm. it'll be neat. And he's a, he's a beautiful horse, so he should work really good with our mares. So I get to be see exciting. his Facebook updates a yeah. lot, and he is gorgeous. He is gorgeous. We're, we're yeah. really excited about that, so that'll be cool. To the people that haven't been to Pitzers or looking at some Pitzer babies, mm -hmm. what would you say, what is the general, what does Pitzer Colts offer to the general public? I would say like ease of use, prettiness, and just, just like an all around horse. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to go for is just something that, you know, everyone can get along with. We don't want extremes necessarily. Although, you know, when we do breed every once in a while, we'll do it for fun. Like, oh, let's try and, you know, get a really extreme one. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, and with the numbers that we have, we just like to have a really nice all around type horse that, you know, a lot of people can use. I'd agree. Yeah. Very user friendly. Yeah. Yes. We've got a lot of color. We've got the Rones with all the Duke Suns. Um, so it's kind of neat. I mean, there's really something for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like with you guys bringing in a lot of the different cutting lines as well, mm -hmm. you're bringing in some of that shorter, quick-footed. Right, yeah. Um, Jim did a couple podcasts and he, he talks about the, the left to right movement. Okay. Um, kind of getting a little more left to right with those um, you know, the highbrow cat line and, and mm -hmm. metallic cat with cat, metallic Casanova. So, you know, we've always had the bone and the structure and the size. And the brains. In the brains, <laughs> yes. So um, we want to put in a little side to side movement. And then we do have um, been experimenting a little bit with the running bread lines. So you get a little more speed. Um, you know, you just got to try and mix, find the perfect mix. Mm -hmm. And it takes, it takes a few years to get there. So... Of these colts out here, is there a favorite cross in this pasture? Oh, I would say, you know, the Mia Brow Beaters on the ranch mares are, are looking like a really kind of a favorite. Um, of course, Dukes and Divas, we really like those two. He's a big, you know, the big pretty head horse type, you know, and the, and the last all day ranch horse type. So, um, as long, and 
the structures are good, the legs are good. Um, we try and get the big hips on them and keep the pretty heads mm -hmm. just, just as much as we can. So. So all of these horses, for maybe people that don't know, mm -hmm. they're quarter horses. Right. And you guys register with? The American Quarter Horse Association. Okay. And yep. why is that important to you guys? Well, it's a, it's a way for us to obviously keep track of everything. And um, the other thing is now the Quarter Horse Association is doing the Q data, um, which is super important because then that is a spot where people are going to report their earnings on their horses. It's going to be kept track of. Um, Jim talked a lot about back in the day, there was all these great rodeo horses, but there was no way to keep track of all those earnings. And so all of that black type is lost. Mm -hmm. So now you, you got to have a breed registry and now there's going to be performance registry, basically records where all of that is going to be kept track of. So it's easier for people to make decisions on breeding, you know, and improve the breed. We always want to strive to improve the breed and that is going to allow that to be, to happen mm -hmm. easier and to, and to help breeders make better decisions. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Would you say on the value end that registering your horse with AQHA adds value? Yes, very much so. Cause it's proof. Proof. Yep. You've got to have proof of what you have. Um, unfortunately there are people who are um, you know, not, not always, uh, what's the word honest, I would say. Yeah. So yeah. it's a way to keep track, um, and to, to definitely add value for sure. Yes. And it takes some time and there's bugs and kinks and all that to work out, but it, it really is in the long run worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you guys are registering how many colts a year? I think I did 270 this year. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of drawing and a lot of back and forth, but you know, it's worth it. It just, it just takes some time. And uh, if you have name suggestions, just hit them my way. Cause yeah. it takes a lot to come up with that many names. For yeah, that anyone many, in so. the comments yeah, that has some yeah. name suggestions. Yeah, we need some, you know, stallion prospect names or something like that. Some cool so, names that yeah. still carry on. Yeah, the still legacy. has the jack in there, whatever you want to say. But yeah, it's great. That is awesome. Yeah, and we have some really great people working down there at AQHA. Jim is um, on the executive committee board now down there. So um, it's a big monster. It's a lot. There's not just, you know, the ranch horses. There's the jumping and there's the, the dressage and all the different facets of it. So it's, it's a big animal and a lot of, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. That might make it even more important because of the crossover of disciplines. Right. Yep. It is. It's just, it's good to know what you have and it helps breeders and, um, you know, people who want to show all those things. It's just there needs it needs to be kept track of, in order for it to be kept at a level that is um, conducive for everybody, and and it really benefits everybody if everything is kept track of. So yeah. yeah. So I have some people that ask how to consign a horse to the pit okay. for sale, and as far as foals go, what are the requirements for foals on the fall sale? Okay. So to sell a, a wiener on the fall sale. They uh, need to be by a stallion that has been paid up for that year into our HPI eligible sire program. So for those sires to be paid up each year, they must be approved by Jim, have some sort of uh, pits or ranch breeding, and it's $500 a year. They also need to have some sort of performance or been rowed or something to show that they, you know they're not just sitting out in a, in a pen somewhere. So we, that's again, just, trying to level up the quality yeah. is all it is. So, and we've um, seen that happen over the years, especially with the HPI. Right, yeah. So I think we paid in 87 um, sires this year, paid into the program. So yeah, if there were any babies born in 23 by those sires, then they can be consigned to the sale. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, any age, uh, of one year or older by any sire can be consigned. But if you want to put on a weanling, it must be by one of those sires that's paid up. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we could walk through the colts yeah. a little and see what yeah. they look like, if who they're they, out of. They just got breakfast this morning, so oh. they're all laying around now. Yeah, they're sleeping. <laughs> they found a good spot out of the wind. It's terrible. They're today. very relaxed, too. They are. 
I like that. <laughs> Taking a nap. Alrighty, so um, let's see here. This bay colt is by Duke Got Jack, and he is out a, of a Sensation Cashmere. Um, that would might be my combo pick right there. Right. <laughs> Should be, yeah. Should be a big, strong, good using type horse. The Sensation Cashmere's on the bottom side. Mm -hmm. What do you guys see a lot out of those colts? They are, they're good-minded usually really easy to get along with, um, good structure wise. And they, ha they have some, you know, something to them. Good, uh, good bone, all of that. So we really like those. Uh, this Roan right here walking away, he's a Dukes and Divas okay. and his mother is actually by Stoli, which is a run and bred horse. And then she's dual pep on the bottom. So that's kind of a really, Kind of the the run cow and then the ranch blood on top. So that's one of those. That's a fun combo. Yeah, yeah. He and he's cute and and I like I like that cold a lot. He's he's a nice. Yeah, cold. that's a fun combo. Yeah. Oh, so for the people that are new with the butt the butt numbers. Okay. Yes. You guys have a system. We They're do. They're not just there for no right. reason. Right. So the so on this colt right here, the ninety two on his left side. That is his mother's number in our system. That's how we keep track of all of our dams on the ranch is they each have a permanent number. And then the seven on his right butt cheek is the sire's number, which would be Dukes and Divas. And so um, over, oh, they started doing this branding system a really long time ago. And uh, there's been other sires that are number seven. There's been others that are, you know, we've had to double up because it's been going on so long. But we try and keep it within the same families. Um, so this mare right here, she's got a 222. She would be an own daughter of Sensation Cash. And that was his uh, sire number was two. And so we try and uh, put, her mother may have had some twos in her permanent number. So we try and like put it together a little bit so you could maybe recognize it at a horse show or, you know, at the HPI. Um, it just gives my an identity um, from across the way. Like mm -hmm. you can pick it out, so it's it's recognizable, and it really helps us a lot. Just keeping them paired up, just day to day stuff working on the ranch. When we're in an alley sorting during the AI um, period, that way we know we've got the right pair. Um, it just you know we're not ear tagging them like cattle. We're mm -hmm. branding them with their numbers, so. And it's, it's nice because a lot of customers like to follow a certain mare line. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be able to recognize that at a horse show or a rodeo and say, oh, you know, I have one of those out of that mare too, but it was by such and such a sire. So it's, it's a really neat, easy way to just keep, keep the mares identified and give them an identity, really. Mm -hmm. So for these mares after sale happens mm -hmm. what will their day-to-day -day life look like okay so and if any of the babies go home at sale time we just wean them off the mare and they load on their trailer and the mare gets put in a pen at the end of the end of the way and they will um, hang out for a few days and then on sunday is our big day actually at the ranch after the sale um, we'll take we'll go through all the pens and any mares that have been weaned we put them all in one bunch if any of the colts are staying with on their mares, we do allow that for young um, colts that need a little more time on their mares, we'll, we'll definitely keep them here for you. Um, so they go back out here onto the meadow, they'll hang out. We usually wean everything by October 1st. That's kind of our cutoff. And then we start, um, start them in small pens together so that we can watch them. Um, then they're not running and, you know, running into things, it's kind of like, Wean and calves, in a way. Um, we just like to keep them close, get them used to us, pitching hay, graining them, all that stuff. So they'll hang out and, and learn the ropes. And then when they get, you know, kind of acclimated, then we'll turn them out into a bigger group. And then they'll be on hay, free choice hay bales and uh, kind of in the bunch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So most foals are weaned at how many months? I would say, well, so we start foaling about the 15th of April. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, about six months, okay. give or take. Um, but definitely about by then. If we go longer, it can like pull the mare's condition down a little bit. Um, and they just kind of need to learn how to 
survive on their own. Mm -hmm. They're old enough to do it, so. And a lot of these mares are already carrying yes. next year's Yes, school. Okay. for sure. So how long are mares pregnant? 11 months and five days is what we go by. Okay. Yeah. And, and when's we'll, the best time for your mares to full? We, um, we don't like to start earlier than April 15th just because we can still get snowstorms here, ice storms, crazy stuff. So, um, you know, and it so, still can be below freezing. Um, so we like to wait till about mid to late April is optimal um, to start because um, we just don't have the, the capabilities to put everything in the barn. So that's when we like to wait. We don't like to go past uh, July 31st breeding just because then it gets too hot. Uh, we don't want to have foals born, you know, in the middle of July, really, because it's it's hard on them. Huh. And actually, uh, foals can't really regulate their own temperature for the first few days of life. Okay. So if it's 102 degrees like it was yesterday, it's really hard on those babies when they're little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good looking group of colts yeah. this year. I'm excited about them. This is an exciting year. Yes. Would you say there is more interest in the foals this year? I think so. Yeah, we've had a lot of calls, you know, and, and interest on the social media, webs, mm -hmm. you know, web, all that. So it's, you always get nervous because you've worked so hard all summer trying to keep them, you know, healthy and alive and all those things and, and just get them to the sale time to, you know, present your product. So it's, it's a lot of work and we have a good team. We've got a lot of people up there that work with us at the breeding barn all summer. And uh, it takes a village to make it happen. It's, it's a lot of work. So I have two last questions. Okay. What is your favorite part about sale week? Favorite part is just everybody coming. All the, all the people, all of our friends, um, you know, talking horses, showing them horses, being here. It's just, it's kind of a big party. And it's a lot of work, but it's fun to have everybody here. We, it's like a big extended family, mm -hmm. so. And then what would you say is the least favorite or it's gonna be improved in the future? I would say, oh week. gosh. Well, the weather could have been a little bit. <laughs> no, um, you know, it's just, it's a ton of work, but it's worth it. Um, it's a lot to get all these colts ready and all the pens and, and all, the th all the things. But, you know, we've ha been doing it for decades and there's kind of a system to it now and everybody knows what needs to happen. And when you have a good crew, it just happens. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter, you know, if something goes wrong, we just figure it out and, and just go on, so. That's awesome. Definitely, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kendra, Yeah, no for problem. letting me have this interview and show everyone on YouTube. Yeah, I enjoy it. I love coming out and talking about the babies and... and yeah. Oh, oh we got this. a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's nice today. It was really, really warm yesterday, so this is a nice break for everybody yeah. today. And then for anyone out there interested in buying a baby, we're going to have Lots of babies for sale yes, this yes. fall sale. I believe there's over 400 total weanlings on so the sale. Between 400 chances yes. to get yourself a Pitzer bread colt. Right. Yep. Okay. And we do have online bidding through DV Auction. Okay. Um, you'll have to pre-register to bid, but that, that shouldn't take much to do. And we also have phone bidding. Um, you'll need to call into our office and get that all situated and squared away before the day of. But and I'll link all of that in the comments below if you guys want to get registered to yes. bid. These guys, <laughs> in my opinion, you guys have the best-minded colts. Thank and I you. know you're fixing all the speed and athletic and sure. whatever you want to adjust later, but you can't add a mind later on. Yeah. So, and yep. these guys have really good minds. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah. Well, so. Thank you, and we'll catch you guys next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.